Hello, and welcome to How I Did It, the video series where I sit in front of a microphone at my desk in, in terrible sound quality um, and <laughs> tell you how I did things. Uh, this week, I'm going to go, just like last week, I'm going back to my game Heart Connection because it's some really cool kind of strange like technical stuff that I think would be fun to explore. Um, and this, so I thought I'd go over how I did the Mad Lib that appears in Lila's route. Um, and before I begin, just a reminder that there is a Pixels and Pins Patreon if you want to help uh, help me make more games in the future. Um, there's also uh, a coffee for one-time donations. And if you like any of this, make sure you like comment. I don't care about subscription, I don't give a shit. But um, make sure like, you comment so I know that if you're enjoying it and things you like to see improved. Why a Mad Lib? And what's a Mad Lib? So if you don't know what a Mad Lib is, it's those things you could do as a kid where it was like you would fill in the front with just like random words and you wouldn't know like what the story was about and um it'd be like oh put a noun adjective a profession and then you take those words and you fill in a story and it'd be goofy it'd be like jenny went to the pharmacy where she pooped <laughs> you know and like it would be goofy because you know you're a kid whatever it's fine uh, and then of course as you got older you'd make them even dirtier why why put a mad lib in lila's route the whole overarching theme of Heart Connection is about communication. And in Lila's route, he specifically has an issue where the character he's speaking to most of it, Melanthius, and Melanthius only speaks Elven. Um, and Lila speaks the in-lore version of English. And Elven is a second language. So his Elven isn't bad, but it's not great. And his big problem is he forgets words. He'll be like, oh, I need to, como se dice, whatever, you know. And uh, it's it, that's his primary problem. So I thought a Mad Lib would be a really great way of sort of trying to replicate that feeling of, okay, I think I have almost the right word, maybe, and live and give the give the player some kind of fun input and sort of um, uh, get a feeling for what Lila's going through of like, I think I know what the word is. So it functions in game like this. They're about he's about to tell the story. Um, and so he's like, no, oh, I'm only paying you this picture. So you fully understand what we're dealing with here. And Melanthius is like, okay, closing my eyes, imagining it now. And you can notice it's Elvin in the bottom left corner. And then as you progress, it gives you a list of prompts, a building you sleep in, a uh, uh, house, enter, place of business, the pharmacy, uh, a bone you can break, a funny bone, you know, whatever, like something goofy. Um, I had a back part hurt from breaking this bone. So, wh wh why and how does this function? What's it look like? So first, I just wrote the story. I went through and I told the story the way I would write it in game. You know, uh, he it's the way he would recount the story if he was speaking complete and total English not stumbling over any words. And I kind of went through and I was like, okay, where would be some fun places where not having the right word might be kind of fun? I don't know. Let's do a combination of words and verbs and adjectives and nouns. That'll be great. And so I just pick some places, you know, where I thought it'd be funny if another word was there as opposed to the word that it's supposed to be. It was a little bit random and I kind of like played around with it a little bit um, by being like, okay, no, I actually do need that word there. Let me do this word instead. I tried to give just enough to kind of um, make it fun enough, you know, that it wasn't like you really felt like you'd inputted information to the story. And then once I figured out um, what words I wanted to replace, I had to decide, okay, these all need a independent variable. They all need to be a unique variable. So I structured my variables like noun something verb something verbing if it was an ing verb something adjective something and oh this one's not highlighted let me highlight the ads so you could see a little better um and so i just kind of went through and i just I, I picked things that made sense to me like okay a noun and it's a building of some sort cool a noun and it's a position i could have done profession with this i probably should have now that i'm looking back at it again and if i ever make any changes to the game i might change that variable just because whatever. And if you'll notice here, I had to make sure that I, because he referenced the building here, I need to make sure it was referenced there. 
um, oh, it's an adjective that is nervous. And not so much that it needed an adjective, it needed to be an adjective that meant nervous. It was just, that was the original word. So if I went back to the story, I could be like, okay, here we go. And then all I did was take that and I went and dropped it into my script file right here. And you can see that any place I had a word replacement, I just put variable, I put the variable instead. And then I just colored it on either side to make it stand out. It's like a dark purple. Um, just so you'd see, oh, <laughs> that's where I put in one of my words. <laughs> um, whatever. Um, and so, it, so it, this would read, mount to this remote variable. How do I get that variable? That's a series of RenPy input functions using RenPy. Um, if you use another engine, obviously you'd use whatever their input version is or whatever. Um, so if you go up here, so before the story starts, you'll see that right here. Here's my Python input functionality right there. Um, here's the full, here's the full thing. Cool. Python, noun building, equal RenPy input, a building you sleep in. So this is what pops up to say, to be your prompt, your input prompt right here. So this is your input prompt. Okay, then it populates this variable, this variable. Um, this just makes sure that the variable can be read as a string. And then if you didn't put in a variable like this, it would populate the variable with something else. I, I think I cited on lodge in this one instead of uh, cottage, just because, beh, why not? Um, and I think I changed like rib here. So there's a couple of slight changes from um, the original story, but it didn't matter. And I, um, I, I played around with what order they were going to go in. So I decided to do, okay, all nouns first, then all the adjectives, then all the verbs, um, then uh, the interrogations. Just to kind of mix it up so you wouldn't know how things connected to one another just to give a little more randomness and a little more mystery and i kind of broke apart positive negative feelings so you wouldn't think that um you hadn't inputted it correctly and i played around with these input prompts a lot what i did to play around with these input prompts and like what would make sense to people is i built it first with my first round of input prompts gave it to my husband and was like play this mad lip and he's like okay and then based on his feedback tried to figure out, okay, what makes the most sense to a player, but isn't leading them to put in a word, um, accidentally, you know, I want them to pick up their own word. And so um, it was a, a lot of trial and error figuring it out. And this is kind of where I landed, you know, um, I need, needs, it needed to be a building you slept in. You slept, slept in. It needed to be a building you slept in, but there's not a wrong answer. Um, I could, this was initially like a building. And and it was a little bit confusing. It was a little bit too vague. It was like a building. And then when you would, they'd be like, a skyscraper. And it, it was weird. It, just, it didn't play right. Um, and I liked the idea of a building you sleep in because it also kind of plays with okay, how much does Lila actually remember? And so that's kind of where I was at. It's like, he's not going to say skyscraper because he knows that's not correct, but he might confuse cottage and bungalow or he might confuse bedroom and um, uh, kitchen, you know. Um, so I was trying to keep it narratively accurate, but also give the player as much freedom as they want. And here's the thing, like, they could also do what the hell they want it. Like, oh, building you sleep in, who says I have to do that? I can do anything I want. Skyscraper, blah, you know, or your butt. Like, it's fine. Like, that's the beauty of a Mad Lib is there's no wrong answer. You can just do what you want. And so I think, you know, on multiple playthroughs, you'd kind of figure out, okay, I can do whatever I want here. That's fine. Uh, and that's, that's it. That's the Mad Lib. And it worked to great effect. A lot of people really, really enjoyed it. They thought it was funny. They thought it was goofy. Um, and I think it really worked well for Lila's story. And I'm definitely going to do something similar again. I don't know if I'll do a Mad Lib specifically again, because it's like, well, you did it once. So why you got to do it again? Um, but I, I liked the, the concepts in it. And so I'm thinking about rolling it into another game. Um, but that's it. That's the Mad Lib from Lila's route in Heart Connection. And how I did it and both uh, technically and conceptually and how I approached it and why I did it. Um, probably more heart connection for the next how I did it because there's not a lot of cool stuff from the D to show you right now. Like I'm just, I'm in, I'm working on it. And so it's like, you know, 
going forward. Um, uh, look forward to a. I'm looking to do a maybe a little small how to video series for some visual novel development concepts. So look forward to that. And if you have any ideas, drop them in the comments. Um, same thing for voice acting. Uh, thank you for joining me on how I did it. And go play Heart Connection. I'll put a link in the comments, and you can play the Mad Lib yourself and put as many butts in there as you want. Bye.